Alliance. He is the beast from Hollywood East, Michael the Hammer. Hey folks, Michael the Hammer Mulligan here with Johnny Johnson, otherwise known as Big John. What's up, baby? How are you? Good, good. You? I'm good. Nice. Real good. So, Big Johnny's getting ready for his third fight. Let's um, let's start off with a little history with you. Give me your history of uh, where you first started training, and let's go from there. Uh, about nine years ago, I met uh, Mark Delagrati. Yep. Um, and I met him when I was actually training dogs. I used to do professional dog training. Nice. And I had my own business since uh, 1994. Yep. And then about nine years ago, Mark came in to my dog training school with uh, his dog. Yep. And he wanted me to do some training with it. So we started talking about dog training and so forth. Uh, he had a Connie Corso. Nice. Italian sure. master. Sure. Yep. And, um, Basically, what ended up happening is, you know, we got on the conversation about martial arts, and he had mentioned to me that he owned uh, Sit Your Tong, which is a Muay Thai academy, and uh, I had told him that, you know, I used to do some little bit of kickbox when I was young, and um, was into the karate and so forth, so he told me to come down, and uh, I went down one day, and that's when I met Eric Armington, Sure. Um, and Mark kind of introduced me to him. And I started training, doing privates with Eric and doing privates with Mark, yep. and just got into it. Felt the, got got the urge to do it again, and here I am. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so it's all been now. You're a head instructor at Sit Your Tongue in Somerville now. Correct. I am um, Muay Thai instructor, and I'm also the uh, fight team coach. Nice. Now Sit Your Tongue is one of these schools that that you know you saw on the Ultimate Fighter season four. Season four, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Delagrati is renowned mm -hmm. in the sport, mm -hmm. and and you guys, you have a lot of UFC fighters go to your school. Tons, tons. Yeah. You know, I mean, we've had obviously Marcus Davis, Patrick Cote, uh, George Rogel. You know, Kenny Florian years and years ago. Tim Sylvia, did you do, because I knew we went there for a minute, but did mm -hmm. you work personally? You must have I worked did. with him because yep. of the size. Yep. yep. I, um, it was actually on a, I want to say either Memorial Day or Labor Day. Yep. Um, we went in and I worked with uh, Tim along with Mark. Sure. You know, did a little spar and did a little clinch work. Yep. The, very, very large individual. Yeah. <laughs> Must be tough to work with, huh? Yeah, he's, he's big. And know? it's funny, too, because, you know, the big guys and I being one, it's like you look at a guy like that and you say he's going to be slow, he's going to be, but he he really presents himself well when he he's fighting. He, he does. Yeah, he's he moves well. You know, he moves well. He's Giuliano, how's he doing with a stand-up? Awesome. Is I he? actually, I was just with him uh, yesterday. Yeah. You know, he's coming down every Saturday. Yeah. You know, and training, training with the team. And then also he comes down on uh, Thursday nights and does the jujitsu now at um, Sit Your Tong. Yep. Now you um, have you also have Chris. We have Chris Eldridge you on Tuesday Chris? nights. I have. Um, unfortunately, because of the way my schedule has been lately, I haven't been able to get down there on Tuesday nights. Yep. But now finally, my schedule is open, so I'm going to be down there rolling on Tuesdays. He, he's he's tough. Yes, yeah, he's, he's strong. Very, yeah, he, very strong yeah, individual. Yeah, yeah, he's perfect for you too. For yep, the yeah, absolutely that's awesome. Yeah. You know, him and Banana, I've done a lot of work with. You know, since my uh, since my first yeah. fight. So we had we had Johnny come on once before his first mm -hmm. fight, but unfortunately, uh, you can't see it from your angle. But I have a fan <laughs> that's right above the camera, and I left it on. It was summer, and so it didn't come out with any sound. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's talk about your first fight. What what happened with that fight? My first fight was, you know, it was against Sandor Binkley, um, and it was for the AFO, and, um, you know, I felt... Well, one minute, Peter DiLorenzo, you stood me up. You were supposed to be here last week, Friday oh, no. You stood me up, I'm coming for you. Not Michael, good. So. <laughs> um, no, it's, you know, I was, I was real confident going in that fight. I had um, a great camp, you know, everybody, my teammates... Um, Jason Lambert yep. um, was here doing the the movie with Kevin James. I mean, it was it was crazy. Everybody came. When's out that movie coming out? Supposed to come out October. Yeah, and he's actually a fighter in the movie. Jason is yes, yep. and um, 
Oh, yeah. Kevin James isn't. Kevin James is a fighter. Yes, yep. Kevin James is a fighter in the movie. Ooh. Yes. Yep. He, 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 let me tell you, he can hit the pads. Yeah, he can. Huh? Yeah. Oh, nice. you'd be surprised. You know. Yeah. I actually am not because if you watch his movies and some of the stuff that he does, he's almost like you know. I don't want to put him in the you know. Farley was a little bit bigger guy, but Farley was very athletic, if mm -hmm. you remember. And this guy, Kevin James, too. He's one of those. Uh, so there's tons of guys that came out of the woodwork to help me. Nice. You know, and um, I went into that fight. Minute and twenty six later, twenty six seconds later, I'm getting my hand raised. Nice, nice, so nice. It was, uh, you know, all stand up. You know, it, it's uh, clinch work, everything. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, your your next fight. All right, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. Right, uh, this is a good. You gotta hear this. This, <laughs> this is. I mean, the ending is just amazing. This is yeah. like one of those stories that everybody's talking about. <laughs> It was one of those things, um, you know, it was September 23rd in Portland, Maine. It was against a tough opponent, Sean Durfee. I almost feel like singing this up, dun dum dum in Portland, Maine. What's this, like Jay Giles? Jay Giles. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, he's, he was a tough opponent, and he was a high-level uh, jiu-jitsu. Yep. So I knew that the fight was going was gonna to be some ground and so forth. But I didn't know what was going to happen when I went in the cage, and, and uh, unfortunately, it was the whole night, it was weird, because as I was waiting to get into the cage, um, the, the air was really, really wet, really moist, and I was like, make sure they dry the cage off, make sure, make sure they drive the right, floor off, right, yeah. you know, and I was going crazy about it, and they told me that they did it, etc., and I go in the cage, and I just kind of bounce a couple times, I slip, and I break my ankle. <laughs> so that's the beginning of the first round before the fight even started. You watch the guys run around, they do circle the cage, do whatever. This is what happens. So he snaps his ankle before it even started. Yeah. Before so, the fight so, even started. So that was it. Fight's over. Nope. Absolutely not. No, oh, all right. Absolutely. So now what happened? I, I rolled my ankle. I was like, you know, right in my head. I automatically knew that I broke it. Um, Kevin McDonald was the ref. Yep. He came over to me and he was like, Johnny, you okay? And I said, no, I broke my ankle. And he was like, well, what do you want to do? I said, let's go. Get the fight started. There we go. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, he looked at me and he said, are you sure? And I was like, stop talking. Yep. Let's get the let's fight started. Let's going. Don't, don't remind me. <laughs> so, you know, he said, okay. And um, the fight started and the first round was tough. You know, I ended up um, getting on in a mount position. I ended up getting he mount. Was in he, the mount he, right? yeah, he got on a mount. Ended up taking me down, getting into mount position, and uh, I actually survived mount for a little over three minutes. And, and, and Banana said that the issue with that is is that because your ankle was broken, you right. could not post up and sweep and do anything. You were stuck. Nothing, I I get, it's like if you break, you know, one of the legs off of a table, you can't. You know what I mean? So it's very hard to get yeah, up. I was stuck, so I was uh, pretty much just defending, you know, the whole time. And then about 10 seconds left of the first round, um, I actually flash knocked him out from the bottom. Beautiful. And then the um, second round started. So they didn't stop it then? No, the, the bell rang. And then... You um, rang his bell. And yeah, bell rang. <laughs> exactly. He was saved by the bell, so to say. And then um, second round came out, and I was just determined to, to stop it at that point. Yep, so nice. So I um, knocked him out. In uh, 42 seconds of the second round. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, how was how was your cardio going into the second round? Because I know how you guys work, mm -hmm. obviously. But but I mean, when and, and I only asked because I was in this position before where mm -hmm. I laid the whole first round. Well, I got up a few times. Basically, I was on my back. I was mounted, or the guy had one elbow on my arm, and he, and I was protecting with the other one. But but I didn't expect expend that much energy. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, you know what it is with with me is when I do my training camps, uh, or I should say when when we do our training camps at City of Tom, um, we, we know where your strengths and your weaknesses are. Correct. You, know, you, do, I mean, you do the research. Absolutely. Right. And, uh, and my obviously my strength is standing. Yep. So my cardio is good standing. So what are they going to do in my camp? They're going to put me on the ground. Sure, exactly. You know, and my whole camp... Um, was literally on the ground, you know, with Banana, with Chris. I also, for my second fight, flew in Jason Lambert again, and it was a lot of, you know, fighting on the ground. And no, then, explain Jason. Who's Jason Lambert for the folks? Jason, Jason Lambert is a veteran UFC fighter. He um, 
He was in the, he fought, I believe, at 185 or 205. He also fought at a heavyweight once or twice. Um, but uh, he was, he was very, very talented. Great wrestler. Awesome jiu-jitsu. Um, he's got good, good technical stand-up. Nice. You know, um, and when he started training me, working with me for the, the first camp that I had, yep. um, you know, I just, I had to bring him in the second you know, so I, sure. I flew him in. And you just felt comfortable. It was a good partner. Absolutely. Yeah, a great nice. partner for me. Um, and at your size, that's tough. My size. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, you know, same thing as Banana, you know, and, you know, Giuliano is, I can't get any any better um, training partners. Well, Giuliano said that too. <laughs> he, he, Giuliano said, Banana said that, that, that you, he laughs because when you fall for something, you only fall for it once. He said yeah. you're a very quick learner. When it comes to on the ground doing the jujitsu, he and he's a tough guy to have on you. Mm -hmm. He's a uh, you know he's too too you know it depends on the day what he tells <laughs> you. But I'd say two sixty two sixty five. Right. He's yeah. right around there. You know it depends on the day what he you know if he had one of his Brazilian barbecues the day before. Or not That's, right. Or, uh, That's but, right. That's right. But you yeah, know, and his you know banana stand up is getting crazy too. Good. Yeah. You know he's getting awesome with his stand up and you know he's a, he's now. A, a tough, you know, well a tough, well-rounded, you know, yep. uh, training partner for me, and and I was with him yesterday, you know, and we were doing we were doing a couple rounds, and um, you know, standing up wise, I was like, man, I really have to bring my game to the to nice. him now. Thank God, yeah. that's yeah. good. That's awesome. He's been trying to do that for years. Yeah. You know, you know what we always say too is you're only as good as your training partners. Of course. You know, and if you're the if you're the one in the gym beating everybody up, you're never gonna get better. Right. You know, whereas if you come in the gym and you think that you had a bad day because you got beat up or, you know, you were you were put on your back and so forth, actually that's a good day. Right. Because you learned something. Exactly, you know? exactly. And that, and that's what he says too. When he feels that hard and that bad that he got rode and worked that hard, he knew he did a good day's work. Absolutely. All right, so so this is, uh, we'll get off the subject a little right. bit and then we'll jack, jump back mm -hmm. on. But, but Christian Moorcraft. Yes. All right. After watching this fight, you've seen what's been going on and stuff. He went to another school. He trained for a minute with you guys. Mm -hmm. I know he wasn't up there that long, but but if you guys had Christian, this kid is a, a, a big, massive man. He's got some skills and stuff. What could you guys do to make his game better? What would you do? I mean, honestly, it's, a, it's somebody that did you watch the fight? Yeah, I did. And what would you do to make that? And I'm only yeah, asking honestly, because for, I love the kid. And yeah. I, I mean, I'm just trying. You know to, what? I I the times that I've worked with Christian. Um, you know he's a he's a young kid. Yep. You know in age. Yep. And and mentally he's young. You know and I think that a lot of what happened in like the local MMA scene with him is just because he's so big and so of overwhelming. Of course. He was able to push his way through. Right. You know a lot of a lot of the the guys in, in this area. Too soon. Exactly. Yeah. You know and then going up to the UFC. Especially at such a young age, not having a lot of experience, right. you know, training-wise, right. um, he just he's going up against guys now that have been doing it for for years. Exactly. You know, and in all honesty, and they got and they got good camps. Yeah. And I don't know what his camps like. I don't. I heard it was more of a rolling camp or something. Is it? Is I think it, he's up at Palm Squad. Right. So that's wrestling. That's wrestling. Yeah. Palm okay. Squad is big with their wrestlers. You know, and nothing against the school or anything like that. It's just, you know, with Christian, I think that he needs to be brought back to basics. Right. He, he needs, needs to be brought back yeah. to footwork. He needs to be brought back to learning how to move his head, slips, you know, straight punches, <coughs> how to throw combinations. And, and, you know, it's that's why a lot of people have hard times with heavyweights with good footwork. Right. Because you don't you see it. any of it. Yeah. Exactly. You know? yeah. And if you can bring Christian back there and start teaching him from the basics, he has a future. Yeah, he does. You know, but and he's still point. got four more fights in there. They got. He's mm -hmm. still got a contract with him. He right. won the fight of the night bonus just because you know. He did, well, you know, the thing is, is especially with the fight of the night bonus with Dana and Lorenzo, is you know they don't they don't care whether you're you know swinging for the fences what they care about is that you know what he he tried hard he went out there right. he had, excuse me he had him in you know he had him in a um a mount yep he got his back yep he had an arm bar yep 
everything he was doing, and the, and the fight just kept going, kept going, kept going. So it kept people, <coughs> it kind of kept people on edge, like, oh, what's happening? Oh, what's right, happening? Right. You know, and Very that's what the fight, exactly. exactly, and that's what the fight of the night is all about. Yep. You know, a lot of people look and see these fight of the nights, and they're like, oh, why didn't that kid fight of the night? These guys were swinging for the fences with each other. Yeah, but nobody got hurt. Right. There was never a time where somebody exactly. was gonna get knocked out, or there, there was never there was a time. no close finishes. It was exactly. it was that fight was on the verge of being finished in seconds. The whole fight at any time. At any right. time, exactly. Exactly. Now, now the the reason I said it to you, and I hadn't asked anybody else that, is because I know what you guys do. You're mainly a striking school. Now you have three black belts training other people up there in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu awesome. as well, which is great. But. Him when he left here, he was a striker, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And now when I heard him going to get into the cage, it was I'm going to rip his arm off. I'm mm -hmm. going to get him to the ground. I'm going to do this. It had nothing to do with striking. So right. that's why I bring back that he was such a phenomenal striker in a fast kid. Well, I won't say phenomenal. He had phenomenal potential as a striker, mm -hmm. and yep. he really did. He tore through everybody on the local scene. Right. But you know, so I was just curious. All right. Wade Darien is your next fight. Wade Darien, March 17th at the uh, Jungle Plex. At the Jungle. Rumble in the Jungle. What do we call it? The St. Paddy's Day Brawl. Yep. Yep. That's what it is. Yep. I have no idea about Wade. About Wade? <laughs> All right, Wade, I'll, I'll tell you about Wade. Wade was a kickboxer. Mm -hmm. Wade used to be a kickboxer. Um, I spied with him. I won't say spy with him. I help pads with him. I play with him a little bit. He's got, you know, no offense, Wade, but I got no ground game and mine was better than his. Mm -hmm. And his, uh, he was a champion in the day. Um, I don't know. I watched him fight Adi Mullen. Yeah. And he beat Adi Mullen readily. Um, Adi, love him to death, but he's not the best competition in the world. My personal opinion is, is that you're going to, you know, yeah. finish him off relatively quickly, but yeah. you never know in a fight. I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, if he has brought, the last time we fought Adi, I'll say this, he had a lot of things going on in his life. He didn't have a lot of time to train. He didn't train a lot for that fight. I think he's training a lot harder for this fight, and if he can get back to the way he was when he was younger, mm -hmm. then you got some work to do. But if not, then, you know, I, I, I know, it, I know, it, I know, it, I know it, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, I can't wait to see this fight, but I can't wait to see you progress and get some other competition out there, too. You know, mm -hmm. who else? Anybody else? Do I hear some Randy Smith in the future? You do. Uh, already. And I'm not looking already. past Wade. Don't get me wrong. No. I just, you know, these are, Randy Smith is a credited fighter and a really good fighter. Randy is another guy that started off, you know, big and slow and did, and he just, you know, he just became a great fighter. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and that's the thing. I never look past, you know, my next opponent and... You know, Wade is my next opponent, and my training camp right now yep. is a hundred percent geared towards my next fight, which is against Wade. Right. You know, and um, you know that I would love to personally see you use some of your new ground skills on Wade. <laughs> I would, I would, I know what you could do standing up, but I would yeah. love to see that. Well, you I, know what? I've been, uh, you know, and I, I always said to myself that I hate the ground. I hate the ground. I hate the ground. And, you know, and I have to say this, and I'm going to say it to Andreas, because he's the one that said it to me. He's like, one of these days you're going to say that you love the ground, you know, and believe it or not, I've been starting to, starting to love it more and more. And the quick answer to that is because <laughs> you're getting good at it. Once you, exactly. get up, you don't like something until you're not doing it. I'm mean, not stuck in positions too long thank anymore. You. Exactly. <laughs> you, you feel better when you can get out of it. Oh, exactly. I'll tell you. It's, you know, and... And again, having the guys that we have, you know, now Chris Eldridge comes up on Tuesday nights. Mike Gresh, Loco Lobo, comes up on Wednesday days. Uh, Banana, you know, Giuliano, he comes up on Thursday nights. And they're teaching our jiu-jitsu program Beautiful. at, uh, at Sigatong. Yep. And I'll tell you, rolling with those guys, you're going to have to learn. There's no question about it. Yep. You know? and, and I love seeing I love seeing the post, too, because I saw that some of your people with the Naga... Yep, right. They did. Gina and, and Gina like that. Danielle. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Everybody's going. You know, plus we have, you know, we we have Tim Bashad. Yep. You know, sure. uh, who <coughs> comes down and, and trains with us, and you know, we have we have the the absolute camp right now. Right. You yeah. know, where yeah. we have you're, our you're more rounded coaches. than oh. you were. It's not just the Muay Thai no. school anymore. No, I mean, no. Never take that away from you. You guys are the best Muay Thai guys out there. But now you also have other parts of the puzzle. Absolutely. Yeah, which no is question. huge. Yeah. Huge, huge. You know, but I mean, 
you're not looking past Wade in any way, shape, or form, but the contracts are already signed. Um, April 13th for AFO oh, good. in Mansfield. That's Randy. I fight for the heavyweight title Beautiful. against Randy the nice. Smith. There you go, man. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So that I'm, you know, I'm excited for, and, I, and I'll tell you one of the main reasons why I'm excited for for this fight is be, is because I know that Randy is he's a grinder. He's the type of guy that he's going to come out and he's not going to finish easy. No, no, no. You he's know? not. And, and he's anyway. another one of those unconventional fighters too. Mm -hmm. He really is. You yeah. know, I like he drags his foot out. He's almost like a Tim Shelby. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it, you know what I mean? He's got that same kind of weird, sloppy style, and yep. he just you never see it coming. Yep. And he has cardio for. I know his cardio is is ridiculous. Well, you yeah. know what it is? He's like Joe Lamoro said. He goes, "I'm I'm a skinny fat guy." Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He's the yep. guy that used to carry a ton of weight, right? And now he's slimmed down, and now he's got it forever. Yep. You know. So, so. I'm, you know, I'm really looking forward to that. That's uh, AFO United Champions. Nice. You know, nice. in Mansfield, and I. And that was with that Pete Lor D Lorenzo Peter guy, Lorenzo. You know, the guy that stood me up and didn't come <laughs> down here. <so. laughs> yeah. And this will be posted on his wall, so he'll get the hint. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's one of those things, you know, that it's, um, I told, I told Mark that, uh, I'll have a belt around my waist. That's, dude, that's why you're here. That's why you're here. You, you work hard for this, you know, and, it, and it's not only because of the belt, it's the pride for the people that you train with. That's because it. Because he, you know, that's mm -hmm. huge for you, man. You know, it's, it's funny. It's like the guys that I train, that I work with, my camp, um, I tell them all the time, you know, they... Sorry, man. Sorry. They inspire me. Even though, you know, I'm their trainer and I get them to where they should be for their, their fights and, you know, so forth. They inspire me to get in there. Exactly. And you do good. That's the other thing, too, is, is you take these people and you are in all of their corners. You are the guy in the corner. You train them. You go to all of the fights. You wrap the hands. You take care of them. You get in the ring. You tell them what they're doing. So now it's your turn. That's it. That's huge, man. You this know? is it. You've watched everybody else do it. Why not? <laughs> this is it. Yeah. You know, I get sensitive, and it's weird. It's like everybody sees me, and, oh, that's Big John, you know, and stuff. I'll tell you right now. You just saw I cry at the drop of a dime. <laughs> <laughs> you know? but, it's, but it's because I have a lot of passion, and I have a lot of respect. You I know, thought it was for, the fire. Well, you know, it, it does feel good. It does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I have a lot of passion. I have a lot of respect. You know, for for all of my camp and and my trainers and and those guys. It's not guys. a joke to you. It's absolutely not. It's not a joke. No, nope. you know, I don't. I don't go around telling people I'm a fighter. I don't go around telling people I, you know, I train UFC. Right, right. You know, right. I'm <laughs> not one of those guys. You know, people. Yeah. You know, it's even sometimes. You know, my close friends and stuff, they're like, why don't you tell people that, you know, why don't you tell people you're an MMA fighter? And it's like, why? Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, I Who mean, it's... the pudding, man? Yeah. Yep. You know, I mean, if... Yep. If, if they're interested, they're going to find out. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and, and you know, going to all the all the local fights and, uh, you know, I've been to Strike Force and the UFC and, you know, the main cards and stuff like that. And you know what? Coming to the local shows... And just when I'm cornering some of the guys and so forth, and all of the, all of the other camps and all the other fighters out there, and the respect that they show me, and yep. I show them the same thing back. You know, it's like a family. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. You know, you have an extended family, and I tell that up to, you know, to to crew Mark all the time is, you know, he's my family here. Yeah. You know, my parents live in South Carolina. Yep. You know, um, I have a six-year-old son. You know that I have here, but you know. When my parents moved to South Carolina, it's like I had no family per se around yeah. here. Yeah. And Crew Mark and, and his wife Marie took me in, and that's my family. Nice. Took care of you. That's it. All right, so I get this is a personal one. This is one that I wanted to fight, but I obviously hurt never fight again. That's it. Mm -hmm. I'm done, right? But Josh Keekman. <laughs> yes, Josh Eatman. Is he in the future? If he stays in heavyweight, would he be somebody you'd be... Do you want to know something funny? Is until this past... When was it? Two weekends ago? Yep. CES. Yep. When was CES? Yep. Two weekends ago? Two weekends ago. Yeah, okay. about that, yeah. Yeah. Um, 20th of January. Yep. Right. It was funny. 
because everybody wanted John Johnson versus Josh Diekman. The big word was out, you know, even um, old school was talking about it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. John Johnson versus Josh Diekman. Excuse me, people posted about it. But I met Josh, or I, I've known Josh, you know, but him and I talked at CES, and um, we're going to just start training together. Nice. He is a great guy. He's an awesome and, and, guy. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. He has, and, and this isn't, you've got, this will be your third fight coming up. Correct. So so to me, look, you may go in there and crush Josh, I don't know, but to me, he is a wealth of experience, knowledge mm -hmm. in this sport. Right. He's the, the actual training and the actual, as you know, getting in the cage, there's two different things going on. Absolutely. There's two different things. Absolutely. So, so oh. that's that's amazing. I'm glad that that's a. Yeah, we talked and it was it was pretty funny. Like him and I both looked at each other and was like, what's the reason for us to fight each other? Right. Exactly. You know, yeah. um, you know, he was talking to me about maybe going down to 205. Yeah. You know, going yeah. to light And I heard that. He's, I couldn't even imagine him at 205. Well, he's, he's light a record now. machine. He's yeah. light yeah. now. He's you know, almost, so. Well, that's what I mean. I mean, he's dominant as yeah. a light guy in his, in his weight. Mm -hmm. So exactly. if he went down, he'd be huge. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he'll have a problem at all making the, making the weight. And then, uh, you know, he's got power. Yeah. He definitely has yeah, a lot of power, you know. Yeah, yeah. So you know that if if Josh and I were to actually get in the cage and fight, most likely it's going to be one of those, you know, whoever hits who first might go out. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I mean, I mean, give it. Look at the Pat one. Pat was winning against yep. Josh, and he got caught, and that's it. So that's a yeah. exactly two big monsters with skills in the ring. It's one punch. That's and it's with small gloves. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so you know, I mean, I I had actually mentioned to. Um, to Greg Rebello um, a little while ago, you know, that uh, about Josh and Greg had said, oh yeah, you know, he does some wrestling and everything with Josh yeah, yeah. and stuff. And um, then I guess he went back and, and said something to Josh and Josh was like, oh, I'd love to train with John. So then when we finally got together at CES, um, we talked, exchanged numbers and said, you know You're what? Wonderful. You'll bring him to a whole new level too. The two of you will compliment each That's, other. Yeah, yep. and, and it's always good to have, you know, another big guy, strong, you know, that that um, you can train with. Because, exactly. I mean, look at us, you know, I mean, even yourself, when yep. you had, you know, when you were in your fighting fighting days, yep. it's hard to find big guys that are capable of doing training. And when big guys do train together, stupid shit happens. Stupid Absolutely. Shit. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> She's gonna bleep me out. I don't know. So, so I mean, with me and Christian, when we were rolling, I cut him with a knee before mm -hmm. he could fight, and right. it was wasn't not even close to being a you know what I mean mm -hmm. a real. It was just a stupid slip thing. Yeah, it happens. And, and yeah, so it's when big guys roll. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Chris Elders separated my ribs. Yeah, it was tough. You know? Yeah, it's hard because it's you know especially doing takedowns. You know, like right now my weight is like two hundred and fifty eight pounds. Wow. So yeah. when you know, when you're taking guys down, I mean, I don't only have my weight that's dropping, but I have their yeah, weight dropping. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> and my ribs and, and bones are just yeah. as fragile as 155 yeah, pounds. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And that's the other thing. I always say my knee, I got good knees, but they hurt when I go to kick. And people will say you're supposed to turn on your front foot. But people don't realize that they're little, you know, Pat's telling me, I'm 300 pounds on that front foot when I'm turning, <laughs> so I'm talking some stuff. It ain't like a little, exactly. you know, my, my, my foot is totally sunk into the mat. It's like wrapped right. around it. You're not going to turn that front Yeah, Yep. You know, and, that, and, you know, speaking of that, you know, right now, even with my ankle, you know, it's been since September 23rd, and even to this day, I'm very cautious. Sure. Of you course. know, I mean, I'm 41. Yep. Don't heal like we used to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, folks, listen, we just blew through this time like it was butter. So, uh, Johnny, thanks for coming. Thanks great for having me. It was great. Folks, thanks for coming to another Fireside Chat with Michael and Hammer Mulligan.